Okay, camera, here's the orphanage and the gift shop here. What's some of the history that happens in here? The history of the, this room where we are, this used to be the old side porch of the original orphanage building. These columns in here in the gift shop are the original porch columns. Um, some people have reported here in the gift shop, um, Charlie Weaver's wife actually saw an orphan run through the wall, and I don't ever think she came back after that. Another lady that worked here in the gift shop saw um, a teenage boy standing right here um, on this step, the big stick, and she had worked here for years and never came back. Last weekend we were here, and there was another investigation group here. My boss and another tour guide were here, um, and the doors were propped open just like this with little rocks, both but old doors, and when they had come back later, one of these doors, I don't know which one, one of them was almost shut and the rock was on the other side and they could not get the door open. They had to, you know, jimmy it little by little to get, to, to get it open and nobody had been in here. So that was pretty cool. I had my sons on a tour with me. They were 11 and 13 at the time. And they would sit right here at the bottom of the steps closest to the getaway. So I'm talking to my group and I hear my boys go, <laughs> and I'm giving them the evil mom eye, like you better mm -hmm. be quiet. And a couple minutes later, <laughs> And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, oh, you're in so much trouble. A couple minutes later, and, <gasps> and finally I said, what? And they looked at me like I had two heads. I didn't say anything. I said, you're not sitting over there going, <gasps> It wasn't them. And they said, oh, I didn't say anything. No way. And the guy next to him said, I didn't say nothing. And I'm like, <gasps> oh I don't know God. how I heard it. Yeah. When I look back on it, I don't know how I heard it. It wasn't physically, mm -hmm. but I heard it because I'm giving them the evil mama. It was cool. She put them in barrels of water back here and chained their hands to the wall. And there's a little hook in the wall right there. And for years, I didn't point it out because we didn't know for sure if that's that she used it. Yeah. But, um, you know, our media pointed right back here. And who knows? Maybe that was a spot where she actually chained them to the wall right there. Last night, that little piece of wire flipped up by itself. This is the, what, the room that the kids called the pit or the dungeon. And we know for sure that Rosa Carmichael literally shackled the kids to the wall in this room overnight and more sometimes more than one night it's with no food or water and it's pitch black in there without our lights on um, I people ask me sometimes if she would put more than one one kid in there and I don't think so because it would be scarier with just one kid so I think personally that was just one at a time Michael you gotta see the pit I know they were talking about this before it's really hard to get into here, but I went back there and I think this is going to be one of those cool places where you're going to be stuck there by yourself where something might happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you want here, take a quick look. I'll just sneak over here. Wow. Now they put kids back here. Just think of little kids, and not like adults. Little kids by themselves, but nobody in there, chained in there, with no food, no water, and just stuck there. And I could see on the wall there's like a metal hook like you would put a shackle to. I mean, you could see in here how this would be terrifying for a little child. It's just, it, is, it just is. It's just very nasty. And um, basically, if anybody is in here tonight, um, we are here to help you, we're here to talk to you. Just let us know that you're here. Mark, are you gonna volunteer yourself to go in here tonight? I will definitely volunteer myself to go in here, dude. Now, now you gotta consider now, it's gonna be completely pitch black, and it's gonna be really scary under here. dude. This is what we do this for. Okay. I'm definitely gonna do it. All right. All right. I can't wait to see your face later. You're gonna see my face later. It's gonna be excitement, brother. Okay. And coming up. The whole seven years that Rosa was here, she literally tortured them. It's still not working. Is there any soldiers in here? Front and center. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit of the history of the basement here. There was a, a soldier that was found up on Stratton Street. What was different about this soldier was that he was holding a picture, a daguerreotype or an ambrotype, mm -hmm. of his three kids. In the last seconds of his life, he held that picture or his mm -hmm. daguerreotype of his three children. And they put it in newspapers all around. And there was a woman in New York, her name was Felinda Hummelston, and her neighbor just happened to show her a copy of the picture in the newspaper, and it was her kids. So she found out her husband Amos died here in a three-day battle at Gettysburg. But this building was established as the National homestead and they said well you know what better woman to be the first matron than Felinda Hummelston but there's a board of directors in Philadelphia 
There was a principal, a vice principal, and teachers and everything, but she was the first matron. At the height of the orphanage, there were around 200 kids here. There was a big Memorial Day parade here in town every year. It's the oldest one in the country. The orphans were in it every year. It was a big deal. She started the tradition of the children literally putting flowers on their own father's graves um, every year on Memorial Day. The kids in town still do that, the scouts and stuff. But four years into it, Felinda met another man and moved back to New York. So now in walks Rosa Carmichael. And nobody knows where Rosa came from or why she even wanted the job because Rosa did not like kids. And when the whole seven years that Rosa was here, she literally tortured them, wetting the bed or acting out. Um, there was one little girl who, her name was Bella Hunter, and her job was um, to be Rosa's little slave girl. She did all her menial tasks for her. She was regularly kicked and beaten and locked in her room. And it was Bella and another young teenage girl. They somehow got holes in their dresses. And Rosa's punishment for them, they had to wear boys' clothing. And because Rosa was taken away, the only thing these girls had, their reputation. So when they left here, um, they had a way to, to get a job and support themselves. And she was taking that away from them. That She put them in vats of water down here in the cellar and secure their hands somehow to the top. And when their legs would give out, they would almost drown. We know for sure that she would lock them in the outhouse in the wintertime overnight with no food or water. That she literally shackled them to the walls in this little room overnight and sometimes more than one night no food or water and it's pitch black back there and she is still around and uh, she doesn't like men you have to touch them pretty hard Bob Why you can't touch them with your fingertips what what else because the touch static them? electricity is in your hand not in your fingertips oh it's still not working I must not have any hair. Okay, let me rub my hair. Wow. You're dead. You're dead? <laughs> yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Just hover your hand over it. It's working, it's working for him. Something with guys. I'm trying to watch all these. Go home. Yeah, hey, look at that. It's a bad thing, baby. It is. <laughs> okay. Are there any children with us here tonight? We have some toys here you can play with. We have a little toy on the ground. It's a little monkey. If you go over by that monkey and touch it, you're going to make some red lights light up. Why don't you go over and do that for us? We know you've been through a lot. And no one in this room is going to hurt you. Come on, can you tap on one of these benches for us? Like this? Let us know you're here. Thank God. <laughs> Again, is there any soldiers in here? Front and center. Give me your name and your regiment. This is a chance for you to let us know you're down here with us. How about touching one of us? Can you do that? How often did Rosa used to put you in the little bats of water? tie you up over by the back wall? You don't have to be afraid. What you've done is downright nasty and evil and you should be judged. Personally, I think deep down, you're a coward. I think you're a sadistic individual that deserves to be trapped. Tell us why you did it.
Let me take a look at it. Down here uh, in the uh, the pit area, this is where they used to chain and shackle the kids. Uh, right now we have uh, Kim and Mark in there, and we're going to do a little bit of a ghost box session. Now this is the part I was actually surprised. Mark's pretty calm. He's in there. He's chilled out. I'm more freaked out than he is. Yeah, Kim, I can actually see her physically shaking right now. So I just, you know, it, what it is is the fact that it's a fact that it's a small space. Well, oh, right. with her, but with me, I don't like that there were kids tortured. So yeah, I mean, yeah, kids Break get misbehaving and you know, bold and stuff, but not to the point of being put into something like this. My name's Kim. And I'm Mark, and like I said, we're here just to, you know, basically talk to you, communicate with you tonight. Um, we're not here to hurt you, kids, so please don't be scared of us. Please don't be scared of all this equipment around here. And, you know, we just want to say hi. And if you're here, just, you know, you can even come and touch one of us. I mean, that's fine. We're not going to be scared. Don't be afraid of this device that's here in front of me. It's not going to hurt you. If anything, it's going to help me to hear you if you try to communicate with us. So, if there's anybody here, Robert, I understand there might be a Robert here. Robert, if you're here, could you please come over and say hi? Just talk to this box, honey. I know the woman that used to take care of you, her name was Rosa. How do you feel about that woman? Can you tell me? Rosa was the, the horrible, horrible lady that locked the children up down here and made them sit down here for days on end. Terrible. It was. It's just not right. And like I said, kids, if you hear this, you just have to, we just have to let you know that Rosa is getting hers. She's going to be punished for everything she did to you kids. Can you tell me your name? I'm picking up radio stations. If there's any kids here, could you tell us your name? Can you say that again? Healthy lifestyle. Was there any documented deaths of any children down here? She said that there was children that were died, but there's no records. Okay. There was one documented death, but he died of something wrong with his stomach. That's what she said. Okay. I understand there may be some uh, Confederate soldiers. Yeah. If somebody is in here and they do brush past my arm, can you do that again? Could have just been when I adjusted too, so. Were you glad when Rosa left? It was a much happier place before her. And just to let you know, kids, you really did not do anything that wrong that you had to come in here. You didn't deserve this. They actually used to get locked out here for wetting the bed. And again, kids, that was not your fault. You're a kid. You make everybody makes mistakes. What they did to you was just not right. It was cruel. I just want to let you know, kids, that you did not do anything wrong. You don't have to feel sorry for doing any of the things you did. You should never have been put down here. What the hell was that? I heard that too. 
Did you hear that? Did you guys hear a noise? I heard, I heard something. What did it sound like out there? It's like a creak. I mean, it could have been coming from upstairs, but I don't know. It just, again, it could have just been a creak out there. I swear to God, I felt like something touched me down on the back. I'm trying to say, no, there's like nothing there. I mean, you know, I'm looking here, to, I'm moving back, and I'm not, there, I mean, there's a rock right here, but I'm, I didn't hit that. So, I don't know what the heck that was. It's possible. All right, we'll shut off the lights, because if the lights are scaring you, you know. If you really need help still, or you feel like you need help, let us know, please. I know I felt like you might have touched me already on the back and the arm. Why don't you come over and touch Kim? Seriously, because can I ask? Because you're a girl too, and you're like a woman, I might be a little more. I'm a little bit more freaked out. <laughs> no. But it's okay. It's all right. If you want to come over and touch me, it is fine. That's just them upstairs. They do. No, we're across the street from the orphanage. Now we're at the Jenny Wade house. It's about 1.30 in the morning. We're lucky we get to actually investigate here. We're going to be going down the basement now. And I know there's been claims of uh, Mr. Wade and Jenny's father that have been reported down here. So hopefully we'll get a, you know, him to say hello to us. Go ahead, Katie. What do I need to do? Do it to your finger in the bullet hole. No, the lower one, the bigger one. The bigger one? That's why it's huge, because oh, everybody okay. and their brother puts their finger in there. And what's he supposed married? to be? Yeah, you'll get you'll married get or engaged within a year. Katie. Katie. Oh, Katie. 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 Get her on this Your ring finger. I'm so, next. Somebody has to stop me at this moment. <laughs> okay. I'm about to partake in a very nice. long-standing legend. Apparently, if I stick my ring finger through this hole, I will get engaged within a year. Or married. Or married. Here I go. Wait a minute. Bob's getting contacts. Bob's gonna give Please! Give <laughs> <laughs> Here I go. Give him the door's blessing. I got Bob like this. Alright, yeah. I'm in. Alright. Nice. Oh, awesome. Nice. We're documenting this. This is the 1st of May, 2011. Have I got flashlights? Mm -hmm. Careful. Okay. The first steps of doozy? I care. Thanks for this, too. That's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> That's what they pay me for. <laughs> awesome. Um, mm -hmm. One time during the, um, when they saw Mr. Wade down here, it was during one of the very first midnight tours we ever had, and the lights are out for five minutes, and it's when the lights were out and people were taking pictures, the whole group started seeing a man standing in front of the group, in black pants, black vest, black hat, and white shirt. He was glaring at everybody, and everybody knew he was not on the tour. Oh, so you guys will say Mr. Wade? I thought that was Mr. Wade. Mr. Wade, if you do hear us here, if you see us here, if you don't want us here, if you want us here, either way, you know, let us know. Listen, we're not here to hurt you or harm you or drive you out of here. Um, so please don't get upset that we're here. We just want to communicate. I mean, if you really do not want us here, definitely let us know. Is there anybody else here besides the Wade? Is there any other, like, any soldiers in here? Mr. Wade, Jenny's here. She's right here. Come and say hi. Um, is anybody here with us tonight? I will be laughing. Is Mr. Wade here with us?
Welcome back to Ghost Detectives. As I promised you, we had another spine-tingling episode. <laughs> Although we didn't really find too much, I must say we did have a major history lesson. And it was a scary experience indeed. I guess the spirits were a little sleepy that night. I can say this case... closed. Let's see what we have on the agenda for next week. Ah, another chiller trip. Next week we're going to the Cinema Draft House in Hazleton. That's right, the old Vaudeville deal. And we know that Vaudeville equals paranormal fun. <laughs> Who knows, maybe we'll run into a couple of old badmins. If we're lucky, we may even get an autograph. I'm Detective Vincent. See you next week on Ghost Detectives.